Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. So this video has been requested for many times and it's definitely long overdue, but it is here. So the big question for a game like Monster Quest 7 Sins is whether or not there is actually a tier list. It is arguable because the way that events like Black Hole is set up, ideally you want to max out a Yappy of each attribute. So minus Dragon and Soul attribute, currently there's 12 of them. Now that is going to cost a lot of resources, so I want to make sure you guys are spending on the right yappies. On the flip side of this, there are certain yappies that are much better than others overall like Keating, while some performs better on a situational basis like Pope or Osiris, and actually some yappies makes more sense on a PvP perspective. So hopefully this will help you guys get a direction for yappies to focus on, especially for some of the new players. Now this is not a PvP tier list, I will make some comments about PvP here and there, but there will be a more in-depth guide in the near future for PvP Yabbies and PvP strategies. In addition, this list only includes Yabbies that are currently accessible to players, so Yabbies like Ninetale, Bloodless, or any of the 4Bs are not included here. I will make a updated tier list once they become available. Lastly, the tiers are pretty much self-explanatory here. I will go over certain Yabbies in more details than others, but overall what I'm focusing on or evaluating or ranking them is their skills, their abilities, the equipment, situations where they will be useful, and finally, their potential for future battles. If you have any questions regarding the tiers or Yabbies, feel free to drop a comment below or feel free to join it on my new Discord server, and I will leave a link in, in the comments below as well. Now let's dive right into it. So as the first pick where almost everyone on the server uses is Lunar, currently there's only Lunar, Firemane, and Anubis as the ancient type. Given so, if I have to choose between Lunar or Firemane, I will pick Lunar. Although both Yabi have similar skills, Lunar's out has a higher crit rate with chances to inflict terror. In addition, it's much easier for players to obtain the Hellfire gear for Lunar than the Metallica gear for Firemane, hence making Lunar more readily available to power up. Using the right equipment, I also find myself being able to heal more with Lunar's Devil Dance than Firemane's Dance of Flame. Anubis is almost a wild cannon that is somewhat inconsistent. He is a good add-on to help you clear missions for Palace or Rune, but again, you don't want to spread your resources, so focus on a 1 or 2 Yabby that is decent to start and then slowly work your way towards 1 Yabby of each attribute over time. Now, I'm not going to lie, both SR and Keating are much better units overall, so putting them into tier 1. I will come back to them in the near future uh, with a more detailed Yabby review for both of them. So if you are a free-to-play player, Caesar and Nen are your two top choices for Dark Attribute. I will personally go with Caesar just because he's a great crowd control and his ultimate is an AoE with a high crit rate. This can take down a few enemies that other Yabbies will have a lot of difficulties with. In addition, he's great as a starter Yabby in PvP. However, as I find his crowd control, his regular attack is on the weaker end combined with his first ability where it also removes any buffs or debuffs on himself. This puts him in tier 2. So Shira was more popular Yabby in the earlier game and by that I mean 1.5 months ago. Now. Um, comparing with Seraph, I do find him having a better survivability, hence this puts Seraph in tier 3. While Shira is great against Mecha and Fairy type, if you have Keating or any Majestic type Yabbies, then they are a natural enemy towards Fairy attribute. In addition to that, my Keating's third skill is also a light attribute attack. This can remove any Mecha Yabbies within 2 to 3 hits. Now Pope is a little bit tough, he can be debatable between tier 2 or tier 3. Pope is generally much more convenient in certain situations, uh, but I'm going to put him in tier 2 here just because there is a limited amount of Magista type, and naturally if you don't have Pope then Golden Seraph will be your next best choice. There is a few things you want to consider when using Pope, so he is best known for his third skill to keep himself and his team alive for a maximum of 5 turns. This means using the skill back to back for 5 turns. This does comes with a disadvantage as well. Ideally, if you're going to use a skill, Pope needs to go first in every single round, so ensuring that you are upping his speed in his equipment or gear. Second, generally you will use a skill when he's low in HP. That being said, he also doesn't recover much HP from it, so he could still die the next turn. So it doesn't mean much to me just to keep Pope there for 5 turns when he can't use any other skills. Meanwhile, the enemy Yabby could be recovering HP or getting additional buffs. So I will only use Pope in a 2v2 fight. And ideally in a future update, you want to pair Pope with a team healer so that he doesn't have to use the same skill back to back for 5 turns. Now, following SR and Keating, Cran and Phil are your must-have for both respective attributes. You want to make sure you are granting those runes while they're open and ascend them. You will find a lot of use for both Yappies. To better paint a big picture, if you have Lunar, Cran, and Phil, you pretty much have a decent team against 7 different attributes, namely Majestic, Light, Water, Wood, Ice, Spirit, and Ancient. 
you can then pretty much slot in any fourth VIP for additional coverage or on a situational by situational basis for the attribute advantages. Now with that, um, in terms of the rest of the wood attribute Yabi, so Rabbit Master, I will put him in tier 3. Actually, I'm going to put all the starter Yabbies in tier 3, mainly because I know that there will be much better Yabby in the future updates that will pretty much replace all three of these. With the Floor Princess, um, she's going to be one of the first Yabbies that you're going to get uh, as any new player. Um, you can upgrade her to the point where you acquire Shura, so you want to use her against Shura because chances are you probably won't get Cran as of yet. So use her um, to get Shura, but after you acquire Shura, I will stop upgrading her or using her altogether and just focus on getting Cran. Haru and Night Orchard, um, at this point I would just focus on upping Cran and avoid using any additional resources on those two. Night Orchard it can be useful to some extent, but she is pretty much a buff manipulator and you need to really understand how buffing works and when's the right time to buff and debuff. Over on the fire spectrum, so considering that some of you might have difficulties with Phil's Lava Island, uh, Monoplume, if you really need a fire type, Monoplume is not a bad choice to upgrade. Uh, but again, I would recommend just saving the resources until you can acquire Phil and then use, use it to upgrade him. Um, the Blazing Bird with his egg form and his confusion after using it, his ult. Unless you have his talent upgraded to remove the confusions, um, even then it still doesn't really sit well with me. So I would just put him into tier 4 and spend your resources elsewhere. So whenever Pope is brought up, I think Osiris comes to mind. Um, by far, he is currently the most experimented Yabby I've played around with so far. Partially, I already have a Keating as a Majestic type, but for certain situations, I do see Osiris having a slight edge over Pope. The edge comes in a form that he can use his attack during Oracle of Demise. In addition, he also carries a light attribute attack that gives him a slightly more flexibility on the attribute front. Now, that being said, when his Oracle of Demise is active, you can't really switch him out of the battle, so he's pretty much doomed for defeat after 3 turns, and if you have his second ability unlocked, then he can last for one additional turn. Now, you can upgrade Osiris to be a good counter towards fire type like Phil. However, against a decent upgraded Phil, at best I even it out, it doesn't become one-sided even with the attribute advantage, um, mainly because Phil does pack a punch, so something to consider. Now, second to Osiris as a mystery attribute is going to be Ampeter. And if you're going to work on her, you want to make sure that she's always going to be your last unit on the team to deploy. She gains additional attack bonuses for each Yabi that has died before her, hence her name, the Reaper. Now, I haven't personally worked on her, but she could be interesting. Um, that being said, there's likely going to be future mystery types. Now, majority of the players will have Wisdom King well upgraded through the Foster Pack. Mechat is good against Ice and Majestic, but in my opinion, both Lunar and Fail would do a much better job at it. However, considering that there's a limited Mecha Yabis out there and his third normal attack can come in handy to some situations, with the right equipment, he can be a tanky Yabi. So, although situational, but I'll put him in tier 2. With the other two Mega Yabis like Tracer and Adamantine, considering the fact that you already have Wisdom Key maxed out, I wouldn't consider devoting any more resources towards any Mega Yabis until maybe in a future update. Now onto the Fairy Journey, so I'm gonna put Vera in Tier 2 and then Shido in Tier 3. Between Vera and Shido, Shido was quite popular when he came out in the meta, but currently I'll probably go with Vera, and she is best against when there is more than one enemy, considering her ult will use up 50% of her current HP. Meanwhile, she will cover 5% of her max HP for any enemy hit, so she could be quite useful in Black Hole or Crack where there is 3 Yabbies as enemies. Her Parasitism works quite well in PvE against some of the tougher bosses. Also, another reason why Cran and Phil are both tier 1. In addition to that, if you have her talent upgraded and you unlock level 6, then she also recovers 25% additional heals from the damage that she dealt. Now, with Laura Fairies and Bardier, I think both units will make sense on a situational basis with the right matchup and the right team build uh, to really leverage their skill sets. June, on the other hand, was a decent DPS previously, but he is a little bit fragile, and considering the current roster in the Fairy attribute, I would just focus on getting either Vera or Shio and upgrading those two. 
On the spare attributes, when they are unequipped, you can go with either Nynx or Almighty. Naturally, if you're free to play, then Nynx will probably be your better choice. Now, there is a slight comparison between Royal Wolf and Nynx. The difference is that Royal Wolf, you really need to play the long game. You want to equip him with Metallica or Exotic, some sort of gear that will boost up his defense so that you are able to get the additional attack bonuses that he has with his ultimate. Now the reason why I put Nynx in tier 2 is because with the SP gear and his second ability unlock, I think he has a much better survivability than Almighty and also deals a lot more damage than Almighty in my opinion. In addition to that, his buff and tier can come in very handy in battles as well as PvP. Now in terms of the ice attribute, Karat would be my top choice for damage dealer as well as his ice ability really comes in handy in any PvE or PvP battles. Rhea and Frost Princess is what I would consider situational. Rhea being the support unit and Frost Princess being the debuff unit. They do have some disadvantage associated with them, hence they're in tier 3. Lastly, Ice Fist would go into tier 4. In terms of the water attributes, so you do have Lucia in tier 3, which is situational, but something that you can probably work with if you really need a water Yabby. Otherwise, I would just wait until the um, Water Fairy King comes out. So considering that Cran and Phil is both available currently, the Water Fairy King should be released next. Um, with that being said, Ardusha, Regic King, and King Khan, I will probably just leave them in tier 4 and um, spend your resources elsewhere for the time being. So I'm glad that this did not turn out into a 20 or 30 minute video because there was actually quite a lot of units to cover. Now naturally I only covered them on a high level so stay tuned for future videos on a more in-depth Yabby review. In the meantime, if you have any questions related to the tier or how to specific Yabbies, feel free to hop on our Discord server and I'll be more than happy to answer any FAQs there. So in summary, you want to work on Yabbies in tier 1 first and ideally you have Lunar, Cran, and Phil which are my top picks maxed out. Once you do, then you can work on any of the Yabbies in tier 2 in no particular order. With SR and Keating, if you got them, great, better use them and make sure that they are your best units possible. Now this is also the first tier list that I have put together for this game, so kindly take everything with a grain of salt. If there is a Yabby that you really really like and you want to work on it, there is nothing stopping you from doing so. Nevertheless, hope you guys found this helpful. Remember to subscribe for future content and join in on the Discord server, linked in the comment below. I'll see you guys inside the game.